Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how I did this tree frog with watercolors. Now I also did this with colored pencils and this video is already out, but I just wanted to show that you can still get as much detail with watercolor as you can with colored pencils. So I used a hot press watercolor paper for this and I've used a cold pressed watercolor paper for this one, but they're very similar except for the size. If you're interested, the real-time version of both of these tutorials, plus many others, are over on my Patreon. Now, I've already done a video covering the colored pencil frog, so I will try to make sure to link that video down below as well. But let me show you how I was able to do the watercolor version of this. Be sure to give the video a like and subscribe for more art-related content, and let's get right into the video. So I'm starting with the background. And I just went ahead and masked out the frog and the flower. And I'm using the wet and wet technique here. So I just laid down some clean water. And then I'm grabbing some of the colors that I can see in the background. So some brighter greens, a little bit darker green, some burnt sienna. But I didn't anticipate this paper to dry so quickly. So I end up having to go in and do a couple of layers on the background. And that's totally fine. Just let it dry completely or you can use a hair dryer to dry it and then just go over and wet it all again and then you can continue laying colors down like you see me doing here. Now you can go ahead and use some paper towel or Kleenex to go around the masking fluid and the edges of the painting. So I end up doing I think two layers initially on the background maybe three but I will come back at the very end and do one last layer on the background just to smooth out some of those edges because I really want a nice, soft, blurry background. Now I did include applying the masking fluid and taking it off and cleaning up your edges with a scrubber brush over on my Patreon, but I do have videos on YouTube showing that, I think, as well, so I'll go ahead and link to those videos in the description. But if you are interested in checking out my Patreon, I post a new video each week. I'll go ahead and link that down in the description as well. Now I went ahead and cleaned off my palette because the flower has a lot of bright colors in here so I'm using a very bright yellow and I'm getting that in first because I don't want any of the other darker colors I'm going to use to muddy up that area or to get over that area first. So I always like to start light to dark and I'm using a variety of different yellows, some oranges and some very bright reds in this flower. And I always want to make sure that I'm mixing up more than enough paint, especially when I'm doing a smooth area like the red area in the flower. I want to make sure I have enough paint so I don't have to stop, mix more paint up, and then continue on. That will allow me to continue the paint flow and I won't get any hard edges. Now I end up going over the flower a couple of times with that red because in the reference photo the red is very bright so you'll see me go over it a couple of times and each layer just really bumps up the brightness of that red. So don't be afraid to go back over an area that you've already done with the watercolor. So just because you have paint on the paper doesn't mean it's necessarily done. You can just see how much brighter that second layer has really gotten this red color to be. I also like to focus on just getting some base color in there before I start coming in and creating some of those details. So I'll end up doing some of those little darker lines within the flower and then I'll come on top and create the shadow on the top of the flower and underneath. And I like to use two different brushes while I'm painting. So my black brush that you can see here is my main brush and then I come in with a Princeton Neptune brush and I use that to soften out any of the edges so I can get it a little bit wet and then dab it off on some paper towel and you'll see me coming in and just softening those edges out if I don't want a harsh edge. That brush works wonderfully for that technique. And you can see I'm just coming in and each layer I'm darkening up. I'm working on the shadows underneath the frog as well. I want to make sure I get those dark enough because we need our shadows under the frog to be dark enough to give the illusion that he's sitting on top of the flower. So don't be afraid to go really dark in some of those darker shadow areas. Now, depending what other colors I'm using in the painting, sometimes I'll mix a little bit of purple in with my red, or if I'm using my Windsor red, I'll mix a little bit of permanent alizarin crimson in to darken up the red. But you could also use a neutral color like indigo or even neutral tint 
it'll just give a little hint of a, a purplish reddish dark color to it. So don't be afraid to experiment with different colors. You could also go in with the green and mix in with the red because that's going to neutralize it, but that makes it a little bit more brown and I was going for a little bit more of a dark purplish red here. And don't worry if you end up going a little bit too dark with some of your shadows. You can always let that dry and go right over top with your lighter color to help blend those two areas together. Now I'm just taking the yellow that I used in the flower and I'm going to put this in all of the brighter areas that I can see in the frog where I can see a little bit of that yellow showing through. And I'm making sort of like a lime green yellow color here. And I'm still using my two brushes, so one to put the color down, one to soften it out. And I want to add a variety of different greens. So some of the same greens that I used in the background, I'm going to incorporate into the frog as well. Now my frog might look a little dark right now, but I will come back towards the end and lighten him up. This paper actually lifts watercolor really well. So I'm going a little bit darker so that I can actually come in and lift some of the highlights out. And then for the very brightest highlights, I'll come in with my PH Martin's Bleed Proof White at the end. But you'll see in just a minute as I come in and kind of bring out some of those highlight areas again, just using a damp brush. And I'm using that technique on the feet here as well. So you can see I'm covering the feet with that orange color. And then I come in and lift up some of the more yellowy areas to reveal that yellow underneath. This is why I like to experiment with different techniques on different papers because some papers lift the color really well, some don't, some layer really well, some don't. So you really want to experiment with a few different techniques on your papers to see what works for it and what doesn't. Some papers, if you go over it a little bit too much, the paper will start peeling up. That's why I do recommend 100% cotton paper. Now this is the cold pressed 100% um, cotton paper from Paul Rubens. This is their loose paper that it just comes in a pack loosely. I really like this too, but I also like their watercolor blocks. They work nicely as well. And a lot of people think you're not able to get as much detail on a cold pressed paper as you can with hot pressed. And that's true to a certain extent so if I would, were to take a liner brush and do a very fine line on a hot pressed paper versus the cold pressed paper, the cold pressed paper is going to have a little bit more texture to that line than a hot pressed paper. It's going to be a lot smoother, but that's because there's texture in a cold pressed paper. And I personally like seeing that texture come through on my painting because it makes it look more like a painting. Now, if I want to use watercolor underneath and colored pencils on top, I'll choose a hot press watercolor paper and I do have a video coming out in the next week or two so make sure to subscribe to see that because I will be doing a watercolor underpainting and then coming on top with colored pencils just to show you how quick and easy it is to get some details doing that. And here I am doing that one last layer on the background so I want to make sure the paint here is very watery because as I come in with this all I want to do is like soften out some of those edges where the light green hits the darker green. I don't want to darken the colors in the background up any more than they already are because I really like the colors. So all I'm doing is taking that wet brush and just smoothing it over those edges to help that transition. And keeping the paint a little bit more watery at this stage will also help me keep the paint wet long enough so that I can really take my time and go around the flower and the frog as I do this. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to give the video a like. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.